And Father, we thank you once again. We're grateful for your love. We're grateful for your kindness. We pray that this morning that you will speak to everyone's heart and bring us to a deeper place in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe, say, I believe in amen. amen. Please, you can have your seat. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the word of God today. Let's go ahead and get into the word of God today. Next month, I'm starting a very powerful series, and I want you to think of two people you're going to bring. I'm going to talk about overcoming depression. I'm going to talk about overcoming depression. What you can do is that you can tell me how depression has affected you. Do a video. Tag me in the video. I would love to share your video. And, you know, the questions you have. You know, depression is becoming the leading cause of danger even more than medical issues right now. You know, yeah, there's one statistic I read said either we, out of every five people, one or two people are diagnosed for depression. So we need to go ahead and really help people. So the same way God can heal bodies, the power of God can help people in their marriages, people that are depressed. When people are depressed, it affects a lot of their lives. So we want to help them through God's word. How many of you know someone that told you that I'm, de I'm depressed, I feel depressed at one point or the other? Have you, do you know someone like that? This is a good time to invite them to church. This is a good time to... Some people don't say I'm depressed. Some people say I'm down. Some people say I'm overwhelmed. It's all the same shades of what? Of depression. It's all the same shades. So when they come to your mind, begin to think about, oh, I know the best series to invite them to church. And you know something about inviting someone to harvesters? It never falls. Uh, we never fall your hand. You know, they go back saying, wow, 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 wow. You know, they go, that's always, they always, because God always meets everyone at the point of their needs. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's get back to it. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. So today, today, so this month we're teaching on finances and we've been taking gradual, gradual steps with it. And so today we're talking about dealing with funding and financial and, and financial issues. Dealing with funding and financial issues. So let me say this quickly. So there are different kind of categories of people kind of persons here. There are people here that are praying to God because they need funding for a project that they have. A project they have. It may be they want to buy a house. They want to start a business. Some people have a contract and they need some amount of money to carry it out. Some people, it's not the funding for their business. It's their personal life. It's the fact that they need a miracle in their life. It, it's a financial thing they need in their life. They need something in their life. You know, they need to pay a certain bill. So the question is this. This is what's going to happen in this teaching. Hey, I've been praying about my finances. I've been praying about this. How can God really do this for me? And you know what I noticed? One of the things I've noticed over time is that when people, a lot of the Christian prayer is about money. Although the church doesn't want to talk about it, but a lot of the Christian prayer is about money. And why there's a lot of teaching on, um, why there's a lot of teaching on finances, most of the teaching that comes out of the church is about giving. And why that is important, that is not the only thing that a church should say about finances. So in this teaching, we're going to, in this teaching, I will talk about, number one, how you can effectively prepare about finances. Number two, when God, how can you position yourself for a financial breakthrough? Like, I'm praying for funding. I need 150 million to do a project. How can I pray for that? I need, need $1.5 million to do something. How can I pray for that? Someone says, how can you talk about that? The reason why is that as a pastor, we always have projects. And I have to believe God. The same way you believe God for things in your business, I have to believe God. Right now, we're, look at Wembley, the, the, the crusade in Wembley. It's a really expensive I have to believe God for that. We just finished spending all this money and doing all the, mir all the stuff in the battle. And we're doing something else. So I'm only saying that don't look at it as someone that does, is not connected. It's connected or the what to do are very different. So some of you, it's, you're trying to buy your first house. You're trying to expand your business. You're trying to start another business. And you're saying, Lord, can you speak to me? This service, the Lord will speak to you. He will show you the missing gap. Someone say, Amen. It will show you the missing gap. If that's a project, an expansion, or your personal need, he will show you the missing gap. Hallelujah. So let's go to the word, the word of God. Second Kings chapter 7. So dealing with funding and financial issues. If you know someone that this will be a blessing to share with them online, it will be a great time for them to be blessed. Second Kings chapter 7 in verse 1. Second Kings chapter 7 in verse 1.
The Bible says this, and Elisha said, hear yeah, yeah, the word of the Lord, and the background to this is that they've gone through a very tough time financially. So the Bible says, and Elisha said to them, he said, hear yeah, yeah, the word of the Lord, toss here the Lord tomorrow about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. He says, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Let me give you the today's translation of this. Things were so tough that these prices were ten times bigger than this. So the prophet showed up and says, by this time tomorrow, this will happen. It's like me telling you and says, ladies and gentlemen, by the time you wake up tomorrow, petrol will be 25 and a half per liter. You will think that's ridiculous. You know, it's either the pastor really heard the voice of God or is kind of being stupid or is just going mad. It's one of those three options. So, this happened. So, the man of God prophesied. Then, verse 2. The Bible says, the Lord of whom the kings and leaned. When it says the Lord, it means one of the king's officials. It could probably be a minister or a chief. It says, answer the man of God and said, behold, if God will make windows in heaven. Because he, this guy is good economically. He couldn't figure it out. And the reason why I'm saying so is that you may be in a place where you cannot figure out how God will answer what you're praying for. Praise God. That's a good place to be. Because it's not your job. It's a job for El Shaddai. Some of you are praying. Some of you are praying for your business. You need this huge business capital for this startup. And you don't know where that is going to come from. You need this news, you need this amount to fulfill your marketing target. You don't know where it will come from. And listen, every time you cannot figure it out, the fact that you cannot figure it out does not mean God cannot figure it out. Every time I can't figure it out, I say, thank you, Jesus. This looks like a job for El Shaddai. Because I'm not El Shaddai. Me, it's El Shaddai. If I try to do what El Shaddai can do, then what? I shall die. I will kill myself. I'm human. Humans is shall die. But every time I'm wondering, how will the money come for the new startup? How will I buy the property? I will tell myself, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. Look at him and say, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. That's so weak. Have a look at somebody else. Say, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. Someone says, how will you get the money for the new project? This looks like a job for El Shaddai. How will you get the scholarship? This looks like a job for El Shaddai. How will you get the job? This looks like a job for El Shaddai. How will you get the miracle? This looks like a job for El Shaddai. How will you get the founding? This looks like a job for El Shaddai. If you believe, say amen. I'm not trying to figure it out. This is a job for El Shaddai. Glory to God. I love it. This looks like a job for El Shaddai. How will you get married? This looks like a job for El Shaddai. You know how many, you know how many people have told me this year, I thought I would never get married, but now I'm engaged. And when they say that, I say, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. Doctor says you can't have a child. This looks like a job for El Shaddai. Someone says, there's a new dispensation. I hope that it favors me. Listen to me. Either it's new or it's old. This looks like the job for El Shaddai. Because I'm like a tree planted by rivers of water. I do well in all seasons. I do well what? In all seasons. Hey, hey, I do well in all seasons. Either it's labor season, APC season, PDP season, UNIC season, AA season, whatever season. I do well in what? All season. My connection is to God and not to a political party. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Look at him. I said, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. Glory! You're gay. Later, you don't like. Look at it. I said, this looks like a job for El Shaddai. Hallelujah. So, the Lord, verse 2, the Lord on whom's hand, on whom's hand the king leaned, answered and said, man of God, and answered the man of God, behold, if God will make windows in heaven, he was trying to, this is a problem, he was trying to understand it. And let me tell you, be fair. You know, when you, let's be fair. You need 100 million for a project. All you have is 5 million. All the people you know, you've asked them. 
They say, oh, they give you 10 million. And they say you must pay by Monday. The tendency is to say, how will it happen? But every time you say, how will it happen? Remember that your job is to pray. How God will answer is his work. Let me tell you something. Eh? One of the biggest challenges in prayer is that people pray and want to determine how God should answer them. Your job is to pray. How God will answer, let him answer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh, wow. He says, how will the Lord, he said, will the Lord make windows in heaven? Might these things be? But the challenge is this. The prophet now said to him, he said, with your eyes you will see it. He said, but you shall not eat of it. What was he saying? What he was saying was this. The way financial miracles happen, if you don't believe it will happen to you, it will not happen to you. So, when we're talking about believing God for funding, believing for this, you must think about it this way. And this is what you must think about. This is very powerful. One of the ways you must think about it is this. Very, very powerful you must think about it. Is that, what are the mindset of beliefs that are hindering my finances? Beliefs are very important. Beliefs are very important. When God wants to change a man's financial state, one of the key things he does is to change his thinking. So, hey, I'm praying for funding, but the question is that when God wants to supply it, he needs to change my thinking. Someone says, okay. And the reason why is this. What you believe eventually becomes your thoughts. Sorry, your belief affects your thoughts. Your belief affects your actions. Your belief affects your results. Your belief affects your identity. First John, First King chapter 4, verse 29. When God wants to change someone's life financially, he begins to change the way they think. That's why you can see a man that is not great financially, but you can tell that he'll be great. Because once the thinking changes, the whole life will follow suit. First Kings chapter 4, verse 29. First Kings chapter, First Kings chapter 4, not Second Kings, First Kings chapter 4, verse 29. This will really bless you. See what the Bible says. You know that. Solomon was the richest king in Israel. See what the Bible says. See how God changed his life. The Bible says, how did he make him rich? And God gave Solomon what? And what? Exceeding what? But that's not where he stopped. And what? Take note of the word. It says, It says, And the largeness of heart. God expanded his inner capacity. I said, This is how Solomon became so rich. He had more internal capacity than the kings that were before him. The Bible says that he gave him largeness of hand up to what? Even as the sand of the seashore. It was unlimited. When your capacity is enlarged, what used to be three years income will come one year income. That's enlarged capacity. I don't know how many of you, let me give you the example. Would you turn on your volume a little? Thanks. I don't know how many, or maybe it's the monitors that they need to turn on the keyboard. Thanks. The first time you made one million, Naira, how many of you noted it, wrote it down? How many of you? Wave your hands. Put it down. When you make one million now, how do you feel? It's nothing. You know why? Because your capacity has grown. But the same way one million was to use them, that's the same way one billion is to other people. Yeah. But all there is is a difference in capacity. So God was speaking for Solomon. His own, his own capacity was not one million or one billion. He said it was as the sand on the seashore, infinite. So when God wants to bless, so someone says, well, I'm praying for funding. How does God bless it? The first thing God does is to change your thinking. What does it change? God begins to remove the belief that holding you back. One of such beliefs, let me give you some beliefs that are holding you back. One of such beliefs is that, number one, money is scarce. Money is what? Is money scarce? Yes or no? No, let's talk now. You know that, I know you have church answer. Church answer is always, you know, what does the pastor, is money scarce? Yes or no? Uh -huh. Some people said yes, some people said no. See, 
what you believe becomes your reality. If you believe on this cast, this is what happens to you. Let me give an example. Oh, wow. If I say to you that there's a snake under your chair, what will happen? You will jump up. Either it's true or not. Yes or no? Good. The moment you believe on his cast, you will begin to have actions and behaviors that will lead to scarcity, not abundance. The truth is that I understand that in some ways money is cast. I understand that. But in a lot of ways, money is abundant. Do you know what the Bible says? See, what does the Bible say? The Bible says the F is the Lord and what and the fullness. Why does God tell us this? God wants us to have an abundance mentality. The reason why I'm saying so is that once you begin to think money is cast, then you begin to experience what scarcity because you have scarcity mentality. So once there's a thing about having scarcity mentality. Once you have scarcity mentality, you, you, you don't want to do much because you are afraid to lose what you have because you think if I lose it, I can't get it back. After all, money is scarce. So you are afraid to take a risk in business because money is scarce. But if you think that money is abundant, what will happen? You will find yourself doing a lot more because you believe that money is everywhere. This is very powerful. The question, what do you believe? Let me tell you, let me tell you some stories that will tell you how scarce money is. I read this story. It was online. I don't know if it's a real story. One of the Arab, um, one of the Arabs very rich people has sent his son to school in London and I bought him a Ferrari or a Lim, um, Lamborghini. So the father now asks, how is your car doing? And he said that I'm very ashamed to use my car because all of my friends keeps using the train. He said, all of my friends keep using the train. He said, I'm the only one that uses a car. Like, it feels out of place. I'm the only one driving my Lamborghini. My friend jumped the train. You know how London is. So his father wrote him back and said, my sorry, I'm so sorry that of this embarrassment. I've wired you enough money to buy your own train. When he said, he said, I've wired you what, enough money to what? Buy your own train. The question is, this, the question is, it didn't occur to him that they were jumping train. The rem he thought was that everybody had a train. When you see how they buy players, does this suggest to you that money is gas? No. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I heard that um, Rodano was just signed up in uh, Saudi Arabia, right? For how much? What? What is it? Two? Five hundred million dollars, pounds or dollars, dollars. I'm not, I, I mean, I don't have the statistics correct. Pastor is telling me that now. Just imagine. See, I want to ask you, not signing for you that they transferred him five hundred million. What? No, hold on. They want to give me the right figures. They, they are not getting it. What is it? Three million. So, the signing fee is $500 million. Then, his own salary is $4.43 million per week. Per month, he earns 17, no, no, for 17 million dollars and you want to convince me that money is cast you are in the wrong profession the reason why is let me tell you something the strategy of the rich is to make the, the poor think that money is cast so they don't fight for it what does the bible say the reason why so say, why are you saying this is money not scarce this is what i'm saying to you the more you believe money is cast the more you experience it because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you'll find that you, your, your blood will carry you to every day's scarcity to confirm what you believe. But if you can change your belief and say there is abundance, then your leg will carry you to where there's abundance. You know, when money is scarce, you keep saying, I can't afford it. 
That's cash mentality because you say I can't afford it. When you have abundance mentality, even when you don't have cash, you will say, how can I afford it? There is a way cash mentality thinks. So, you need 100 million for a project. You say, I can't find the money. Who said so? Abundance says the money is somewhere. How can I find it? Abundance says the money is available. How can I find it? Scarcity says the money is not there. Don't look for it. So you see, the person that has cash mentality, he's doing nothing. He's making no move. He's taking no step. Because in his mind, there's nothing there. But the one that has abundance says, the money is there. I just need to what? Find it. Question, which one are you? Is the money there or is it not there? Some of you, you're on the level where you need two or three million. That's fine. Some of you, you need 30 or 40 million. That's fine. Some of you, it's 300 to 400 million. So, so you need, that's fine. Some of you, it's three to four billion you need. The money's there. One of the things I trained myself, I had to train myself to always remind myself that the money's there. The money's there. Ah, the money's there. Oh. My capital is there. My funding is there. The money is there. I just have to receive my portion. Are you here? See, you, you know, because it's a mentality we buy. The, the money, the moment you say the money is scarce, what happens? You begin to hoard. Then you stop looking. Let me give an example. There was a recession in America in the early 19s, 1900s. But there was one man that the recession didn't affect. The man was deaf and dumb. So he had a, he had a store. But he had a cafe store. But it didn't affect him. So eventually, the recession had gone on for like a year or two. All the stores are closed down. Watch this. As all the stores closed down, only his own was growing. Because as they all closed down, his own was the last option. Eventually, one person that understood sign language came one or two years after the recession had started. And said, you know, you said, there's a he said, hey, the guy now told that there's a recession. Now, how is he surviving? The guy said, oh, wow. That he never knew there was a recession, though. That he's him for the first time. The guy said, wow. Recession have been for two years. He said, wow. That he never knew. Guess what? In six months, it's just closed down. Because, because as soon as he was looking out for recession, he found it. Thoughts are very powerful. Let me give an example. Everybody hold your hand like this. All of you online, join me. Hold your hands like this. Just close your mouth. Imagine lime in your hand, lime, that lime. Squeeze it into your mouth. Let it drip. Let it drip. First, you... what, what was happening right now? How many of you felt the taste? Your thoughts are so powerful, they create your reality. So, when you say that, listen to me, once you say that there's scarcity, it's so powerful, it will create it. Do you see? You didn't see Limo. You didn't even see it. But just imagine it. You, you, you felt that, that what sour taste in your mouth. So think about it. Once you believe there's scarcity, what do you feel? You begin to feel scarcity. You begin to behave like scarcity. You begin to receive scarcity. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. You need to change it. And unfortunately, because of the poverty in an environment, we grow up thinking of scarcity so much. That's why Jesus Christ said, you will have the poor with you always because it's a software. The father will pass to their children. It's a software. One of the things I tell my children when they say they need money is this. I don't say, where will I find it? You know why? When I say, where will I find it? I'm training my children in poverty. What I'm saying? I'm what? I'm training my children in poverty. I told them, how can we have this money? What can you do to bring the money? So I'm telling them it's available, but also take responsibility because it's not free lunch in life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So what mentality must you do? What mentality must you do with? Number one, money is scarce. So let me, let's do a, a little assignment. Everybody here. Write down the amount you are believing for. Either for a project, for, for a project, for a need. Write it down somewhere. Then write the mentality that is holding you back. Write it beside it. I'm going to ask you, so write it. 
I'm going to ask you. So the first thing is that money is cast. So what do I need to respect money is cast? I tell myself these things. What do I tell myself? I tell myself that there's wealth everywhere. I tell myself that there's more supply than there's need. There's more supply than there's need. So once I tell myself that there's wealth everywhere, there's more supply than there's need. I find wealth everywhere. I find more supply than there's need. The second thing, the second belief, keep writing. Second belief is that, second belief, second belief, they will tell themselves that affects their funding. I have nothing or what I have is not enough. I have what? Nothing. Or what I have is what? Not enough. This is another belief that affects people's financial destiny. I have nothing. What I have is what? Not enough. What can you do? You say, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing. What? In fact, everybody that you know that is stranded financially, that is not doing well financially, ask them what do they have. They will say they have what? Nothing. I have nothing. It's a mindset. So, you'll be like, um, I have nothing. What I have is not enough. L- look at what I'm saying. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 19. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 19. Oh, wow. Are you sure you have nothing? Are you sure that what you have is not enough? Proverbs chapter 28. Instead of saying I have nothing, let me tell you what you should say. I have something amazing to offer the world that I'm being paid high, I'm being highly rewarded for. See what the Bible says. Let's read verse 19. Can we together want to go? Hold on. Can we together want to go? Hold on. Why does the man till his land? Because he believes there's some in his land. The reason, see, a lot of people have confidence in somebody else's talent and gifts. They don't have confidence in their own gift and talents. He says, he that tilleth his land. Praise God. I said, praise God. He said, the reason why you cannot work on your gift is that you don't even have faith that this gift can turn out to something. You don't believe it. He said that tilleth. The question is that stop undervaluing your gift. Stop undervaluing yourself. He says, he that tilleth his land shall have what? Is it bread or plenty of bread? My brother, believe in your dreams. Believe in your gifts. Believe in yourself. He said, he that tilleth his land plenty of bread. But guess what? Instead of them to till, see what the poor people do. But he that followeth after what? After vain persons shall have what? So, instead of you to believe in yourself and what you can do, you keep copying other people. Everybody's opening a restaurant. I'll open a restaurant. Is restaurants you're calling? But the reason, see, Nigeria, we have a copy, copy culture. You know why? People don't believe in themselves. As soon as pure water came out, everybody said, doing what? Pure water. As soon as shortlet came out, everybody said, doing what? Shortlet. It was time it was salon. Everybody said, sh- sh- salon. You're not asking that. Can't we think? It's not as if we cannot think. We don't have confidence. That what we do can become something. We lack that confidence that what we do can become something. See what the Bible says here. So there's that thing that says, I have nothing or I don't have what's enough. The same thing with the woman when she told Elisha. She told Elisha, she said, Elisha, what do you have? He says, I have nothing. I have nothing. He says, what do you have? He says, I have nothing. I said, no, you have something. He said, well, I have a pot of oil. Not just that. You have neighbors you can borrow what? You can borrow jars from. What do you have? I've seen people that lose weight for themselves. And they turn into a business that's a multi-billionaire business. Why? Because they found that it was a journey. What do you have? I've seen people that they were having forex problems in trying to transfer money, transfer money. They started a business and they said from that they found something. They started something. I've seen people that, I, I met a lady. She said, you know, I know a lot of people. I said, how do you make money? He said, by connecting them. I said, how much? He said, I make about 500 million from that every year. He said, because when I connect people and they do the transaction, I charge a fee. It's a professional service. The question, 
It's not as if, this is the thing, eh? It's not as if you don't have something. But you don't believe in it. So you don't find yourself tilling your ground. It says, it says, he that tilleth his ground. Because you must believe in it to till it. Are you here, somebody? So you say, I don't have, I don't, I don't have anything. I, I don't have something. I don't have, I, I don't. No, stop focusing on what you don't have. Focus on what you have. Stop focusing on what you don't have. Focus on what? What you have. Question is, what do you have? If your life is going to change, the first thing must change your thinking. You must stop thinking, I don't have. You must focus on what you have. What do you have? Praise God. What's a, what's a microphone? Give the microphone to Pastor DJ. When he was new in church, he was DJ that time. He was staying in one, was it boys' quarters or it was a sub-boys' quarters? Because it was not really, you, you didn't even have your own toilet and bedroom, did you? You were sharing with people, right? No, no, no. Oh, you had your own toilet and bedroom. Oh, I thought you were sharing with people. Did you have your own kitchen? No, you were sharing that with people or something like that. Kind of. Yeah, but it was like a still mattress. You were like a still mattress, something like that. Yes. Or like a still mattress. That, that's when I met him. And, um, you know, I think was earning some amount of money, but we had all these debts. Yes. He had huge debts, borrowed for next year. If I, when I spoke to him, he said, the problem is that I cannot see myself living without borrowing. What changed from where you were where you were borrowing so much. And amazingly, he was single. And he was in debt. Now he's married with a child. And now they don't have debt. What changed? It was my mindset, sir. That's it. What changed your mindset? So, um, yeah. So, whenever I need money, what I used to do then was I used to look for someone that I could borrow from. Mm. But what change was... Why did it also move from? Because it was scarce. So because it was scarce, I have to always what? Borrow. Continue, sir. So what change was, we had a conversation one day, and you told me, instead of looking for someone to borrow, can you find a skill that you can offer to people that can bring in money for you? I was saying that when you have need, create the a supply. Skill. What's the mindset there? The mindset that money is available. So, if it's available, I look for a way to what? Thank you. See, the mindset is somewhere there. It's somewhere there. Question. Write down the financial goal you want. Write down the mindset that is holding you back. Write it down. All of you online, write it online. Write down the mindset that is holding you back. Ola, what mindset is holding you back? Yeah. What's your financial goal that you're trying to do right now? What mindset is holding you back? Yeah. The money I don't have is the money I don't want to. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you see my set? The money I don't have is the money I don't want. Once I make up my mind, if I just make my mind, I want to do this, the money is going to come. The reason why is that I've taught myself over and over the time, I can actually create this. Yes. Okay, um, I need a lot of money for real estate. For real estate? Yes. So why don't you have it? I'm like, I. I feel like I, I need some sort of connection, you know, to... So you don't have, you don't have, yeah. you don't have it. Is this a good thing? I, I have nothing. I don't have the connection, right? Yeah. Is that true? You don't have the connection, right? I feel that a lot of times. You, you feel that? Let me just ask you a question. How many people do you know that can connect you to people? And you have spoken to about this. A few people. Phil is like 25? Not up to 25. 15? Not, Not up to 15. 15. Five? About five. Yeah. See now, this man is a senior person in the bank. He's been in our church for years. So he knows everybody in our church. And he needs this money for business. And he's spoken to less than five people. Five people like two or three. And he says, I don't have the connections. That is. You don't have the connections. Is that what you think or that's a reality? That's what I feel. That's what you feel. Yeah. With what we're saying right now, let me tell the people you can talk to. You can talk to me. You've never told me before. One. 
Have you ever told me before? Someone has asked me to talk to you before, but, but I, I just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, the reason why, you know, what, 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 what do you think? Because the point is that it's already scarce. It's going to be difficult for him to help. It's going to be difficult. It's, it's a mindset. It's scarce. So everybody will pray for that. It's going to be difficult. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I ask for help is that help is everywhere. I don't have a scarcity that is scarcity. I'm like, help is what? Everywhere. Because he told me in his word, I will send you help out of Zion. So, you know, I, I mean, of course, the reason also why he's not doing that, because he's not desperate. He has a great job that pays him a lot of money. So that's why he's not. If he's desperate, he will look for help. So sometimes, you know, all of you look up here. You want to raise funds for business? You don't want to raise any money. You are not serious about it. If it's a health issue that your husband or your child have, you will raise that money times five. Yes or no? You don't want to raise it. Ah, stop giving excuses. You don't want to raise it. I've seen people that are broke that when their mother had cancer, they raised 20 million. Why? The bigger your why, the bigger your push. Praise God. That's why God knows how to use for to motivate us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. So, another reason. So, so, I'm just giving that reason. So, I'm only saying to you. So, when people say, I'm looking for funding, I'm praying, praying, praying. I'm only saying that there's a mindset that holds everybody back. There's a mindset that holds everybody back. There's a mindset that holds everybody back. So, the third reason why people also, do, that holds people financially back is that people, people, Ah, people, I don't know how to say this, but there's a mindset that money is hard for me. I'm a hustler. So, this is what I tell myself. I'm designed for abundance. This is what I tell myself. What I tell myself again? I tell myself, I'm, I'm deserving of wealth. I'm what? Deserving of wealth. Let me give an example. And let me tell you something. Please look up here. Look up here. Some of you Christians, you know, would never really think that is a great idea. You know, one of the reasons why Christians are broke is that thing. We feel we are not deserving of wealth. I'll give my personal story. So some years ago, someone looked at me and gave me a Bentley. You know Bentley? I drove it once or twice and I sold it. I just couldn't ha huh, just come to church and drive in a Bentley. 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 But the person that God inspired to give it to me felt I was deserving of it. The God that inspired felt I was deserving. But me, I felt I was what? Not deserving. Every time you feel you're not deserving, you push away wealth. You push away wealth. Do you imagine if what is a person as your friend and the person comes to visit you? I'm like, ah, you came here. I don't deserve for you to come in here. I know you, you're not my level. I know this. They will go away. So what happened? That a lot of us have that mentality. We are not what? Deserving. When you find first class, you want to hide your tickets. You don't want people to know that you're in business. You want to, ah, we just flew. We just, you, you want to hide. You, you got your first 20 million. You, just, you want to hide. Because in your mind, I'm not deserving. But when you have poverty, you love to flaunt it. I didn't see this shoe now. I'm running for five years. I see it's still very strong. But when you bought the shoe that was $5,000, you don't want to talk about it, right? The reason why is that because there's a guilt. And let me tell you something. When you feel guilty, your faith cannot work. Say, I'm deserving of wealth. This is the reason why a lot of us cannot charge good, good amount for our products. You know why? Because in your mind, who will pay me? Ah, who will pay me one million? Who will pay me? Who will pay me? Who will pay me? And people, because in your mind, there's scarcity. There's the fact that you are not deserving. You say, who will pay me? Meanwhile, God has sent people to pay you all this money. They want to pay you. And they want to pay you. He said, who will pay me? God says, charge. Let them pay you. He said, charge. He said, who will pay me? Who will pay me? How many want to earn? He said, ah, just anything. Just anything. Just anything. Hey, you are deserving of wealth.
Are you here? Very powerful. I'm deserving. So if you don't, you see, if you have the negative mentality, it has a way of pulling you back and pulling you back and pulling you back. I'm deserving of wealth. How do I know that? <laughs> the way I know that when he made me, he made me to be fruitful. He made me to be fruitful. In fact, there was a time that someone gave me something. I wore it and when I was going to a certain place, I felt so bad I took it off. It was a risk to watch. I took it off. I'm like, no, I can't wear this church here. It's very expensive. Because it was not about the person. It was about me. I just didn't feel I was deserving of wealth. Someone say hallelujah. But God is breaking that mentality. Someone says, I'm designed for abundance. Say, I'm deserving of wealth. I'm highly rewarded financially for my services. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Bless you. Yes. So you need, to, you need to feel comfortable with wealth. It's our inheritance. The Bible says, wealth and riches are in the house of the just. That's what the Bible says. Look at what we're doing in Wembley. If you don't have money, how can we do that? We're not going to go and speak in tongues there to pay. You must pay some real good money. And I'm saying so because one of the things in religion, religion does it, this is that I'm deserving, is a big thing for Christians. When you go to clubs, you don't see, they would, they would just pack, tell me I'm at the charging club. They just pack table and say, champagne. Is it champagne or champagne or champagne or? Huh? Pain is inside. Huh? Pain is inside. Okay, they say pain is inside. And you see them. You know, the other day, you see bills from nightclubs. 15 million. 80 million. People feel it's normal. Come to the house of God. Let's give 50 million. It will be the talk of town for the next one year. Hey, that brother gave 50 million in church. Hey, hey, hey. He gave 50 million in church. Hey. Because, because we, we, we don't feel that way. Praise God. Christians will do proper service. You are doing work with your own hand though. You cannot charge that I'm a kefra. I will come to your house for 250,000 there. You can't charge. Let charge. Let them negotiate. Because the thing is that, and when you charge, they already see that you don't mean what you say. They can say this on a 25,000. They will start pricing you. You say, <laughs> You know, he said, you know, he said, my, it's 250. He said, 250. Have you earned that money before? You know why they've asked you that? Because they can't see the way you said it is alien to your mouth. Meanwhile, there's a girl that wants to sit with a man I've never seen before. He said, if I come, send me to that $5,000 for body work. He said, credit me. They're not even negotiating. He said, say this, say this. You will see the the puffiness. Like, no, if you can't, that's fine. If you can't come, that's okay. I don't know with broke people. <laughs> and you, you are walking with your head, with your hand. You cannot charge. I, I forbid it on your behalf. Do, do, do you know what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah? He says, you shall not labor in vain. He's in your heritage that when you walk, people will pay you well. Say people will pay me well. Not just pay you, they will pay you well. They will pay you in currencies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Go on the road, you see prostitutes when they park, they say how much? They don't shine face. Oh, okay, no, no, I'm not, not this amount to. You now, you are working as a fashion designer. You are working as an event planner, an IT person. You don't have the boldness to say, I know what I carry. I know what I can deliver. This is my price. The reason why you can't do that is because you, you feel as if you don't deserve it. And that mentality makes you poor. I'm 
I'm made for abundance. I'm made for abundance. You know what? Once you begin to know you deserve to be highly paid, the flip back is that it will make you begin to create high value. Because since you know that you are premium, then I start doing premium things. Praise God. You need to break the power of the mindset. You need to break the power of scarcity. The power of the fear. That's why when you come to the table, give a tithe and offering, you're always afraid. Because money is scarce. So if I give tithe now, I will suffer tomorrow. Because you're right, money is scarce. And that's why when, when God says you tithe or give, that's why it's some of you, God will say, give a seed. That's why it says give. The reason why is that God is trying to break that fear and tell you that you can do it. Many of you know the joy when you give, especially when it was tough for you. It will pain you, but it will be that joy and calmness that, wow, I did the will of God. You will look back in some time and say, I'm so happy I did that, except at that time. Because God uses to break the power of fear. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Psalm 6, Isaiah 65, verse 23, I believe. Isaiah 65, verse 23. Glory to God. Isaiah 55, verse 23. Hey. Hallelujah. When, you, when the scripture appears, just shout. Amen. Just shout. Isaiah 65, verse 23. Isaiah 65, verse 23. We're waiting for you at the back. Isaiah 65, verse 23. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey! 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 Stand on your feet, everyone. What does the scripture say? Hey! Say, I shall not labor in vain. Oh, shalabakabarabaya. He that it's a real estate deal. He that you're in marketing. He that you do forex trade. He that you're in crypto. He that you're in IT. You're in paid employment. He said, you shall not labor in vain. Can I declare over you? You will be highly rewarded financially. You will be highly rewarded financially. You will be highly rewarded financially. The biggest deal comes to your industry. They come to your city. In the name of Jesus. Grace. 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 This is your story. If you have any shot, I receive it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I will be highly rewarded financially. Money comes to me easily. Hey. Money comes to me easily. Let me tell you something. If you're not careful, you'll be like, oh, this church is so materialistic. The reason why I'm asking you to say this is that I knew how we all grew up. With a lot of scarcity. And, all, and those things were sunk into our mind as a child. The reason I'm making you say this is that I'm trying to break those patterns. Money comes to me easily. One of the easy things I do is to make money. <laughs> you, you, these are the things like I make money for a hobby. <laughs> See, this is how you begin to reprogram yourself. You know why? When I was young, I was trained to know that money was tough. I said, Mommy, I want to buy this. Say, eh? Where will I find money? Will they climb it on trees. Is it, is it, is it, they, and they are, if you're in Yoruba, Yoruba have all those deep proverbs. That makes you feel as if money is a problem. But those things are poverty enhancers. I begin to correct myself. So I'll say, I, can, I know I can't make it in this country. What kind of talk is that? Anywhere I go, I make it. If I'm here, I make it. If I go to London, I make it. 
in Canada, I make it. In Japan, I make it. Someone says, whatever I do, I shall prosper. Praise God. Look at it again. Look at the scripture. Oh, glory to God. Look at the scripture. He says, thou shalt not labor in vain. That means in everything you do, you will see profits. Lift up your hands and thank him for his word.